I need to say something about Chamish Metevis. The Rebbe spoke three times about it. And each time he spoke in a different signal. In the summer of 85 he spoke in one way, in the winter of 86 he spoke in a different way, and then when we won in 87 the Rebbe spoke in a third way. So I just want to say this, that when the Friedrich Rebbe passed away, the Rebbe started to fabring a lot. Before that, the Rebbe Fabreng much more limited. The Rebbe started Fabreng a lot. Especially the first year when it was unofficial, the Rebbe Fabreng, every chance he got, he Fabreng. And the Rebbe had one simple message. It was a very simple message. The message was that the Rebbe is alive. The fear the Rebbe is still alive. One of the most important stories that's not told enough is this story. The Rebbe Rayat, the fear the Rebbe passed away on Shabbos, Yud Shvat. Tuesday, which was in the middle of Shiva, remember the Rebbe was not an Oval, the Rebbe was not sitting Shiva, he was a son-in-law, he wasn't a son. Tuesday, Yud Gimel Shvat, the Rebbe went to the Oyal for the first time. Now there wasn't an Oyal, there wasn't even a Tzian, there was just a, a mountain of earth. And there's pictures. The Rebbe went to the Oyal three days after the Friedrich had passed away, the Rebbe went to the Oyal the first time. And when the Rebbe went, people went with him. Amongst the people who went with the Rebbe to the Oyal that morning, was a yid by the name of Harav Yitzchok Dubov, Rabbi Dubov. He was a rabbi in Manchester. He lived 90 years. He came to the rabbi on his 80th birthday. He said, no, I'll see you in 10 years. He lived a little bit. Mommy, she passed. The rabbi gave him a bracha for 10 more years. He passed for a little bit after 90. Rabbi Yitzchok Dubov knew the rabbi from Riga. When the Fyrik rabbi came from Russia, I heard this from the Mishpacha. I have a relative who was a Dubov. When the Fyrik rabbi came from Russia, he moved to Riga, but he needed a job. Rabbi Dubov had a rabbonus in Riga. So he gave the Fidik Rebbe his job. The Fidik Rebbe became the official rabbi of the shul. And Rabbi Dubov moved to Manchester. And in Das Tachten, he say, that saved his life. Had he stayed in Riga, the Nazis would have gotten him. But because he was living in England, he was spared. But he gave the Rebbe his shul. He gave the Fidik Rebbe his shul. But he was around when the Rebbe first came from Russia. The Fidik Rebbe. When the Fidik came from Russia, the Rebbe was still a Bachar. He wasn't yet married to the Rebbe. And for a few months, he hung around in Riga until the Latvian government kicked the Rebbe out. <laughs> he had no choice, he moved to Berlin. The Rebbe moved to Berlin when he was still a Bachar. The Rebbe moved to Berlin because they didn't let him stay in Riga. The Rebbe was living in Paris, so they didn't let him stay in Poland. The governments we had all these rules. Anyway, so he knew the Rebbe from then. He knew the Rebbe from before he was married to the Rebbe. I'm assuming he was also at the Rebbe's chasana, but he was in, he was he knew he was he was sold. He met the Rebbe when the Rebbe was 25 years old, 26 years old, and he knew this is it. This is the real deal. When the Fidik Rebbe passed away, he happened to be in New York. Why was he here? His son got married Thursday night. Ches Shvat was the chasana of his son. Label to Baba Lava Shalom. So he was punked in New York. So when the Reb went to the oil that Tuesday morning, Yud Gimel Shvat Tov Shin Yud, Rabbi Duba was standing right next to the Rebbe. And the Rebbe did whatever he had to do. I'm sure the Rebbe did a lot of crying. And when the Rebbe was finished and he was about to walk away from the sea, and Rabbi Duba stepped up and he said to the Rebbe, Bizit Sidit Given the Rebbe. It's the Zentir. I don't know how he worded it. But he said, until now it was the Rebbe, me and the Fidik Rebbe. Now it's you. It was three days after the Fidik Rebbe passed away, Rabbi Dubov told the Rebbe, you're next in line. And the Rebbe snapped. The Rebbe snapped. The Rebbe answered him very sharp. The Rebbe leapt. Don't even talk. The Fidik Rebbe is alive. Don't even talk. The Rebbe leapt. In other words, the Rebbe's reaction to someone telling him that he's the next Rebbe is, what are you talking? The Rebbe leapt. The Rebbe is alive. The Fidik Rebbe is still alive. Now, for that year, that was the, the diet that Chassidim got from the time the Fidik Rebbe passed away until the Rebbe accepted the position officially, that's all they heard. The Rebbe left. The Fidik Rebbe is alive. The Rebbe is alive. And so on and so forth. Once the Rebbe accepted the Nesias, this language was, was reduced. It was less. Meaning the Rebbe never stopped saying 
that the Friedrich Rebbe is alive, but it wasn't it wasn't 100% of the diet. It was 5% of the diet. You know, the other 90% of the diet was, we have work to do. I mean, the Rebbe was busy with doing things, not with talking about the past. But for that year, for that year, the year that the Rebbe was not officially Rebbe, that all Chassidim heard. And if I bring and you went to, the Rebbe found another way of saying the same thing, the free that kept still alive, and whatever it was. When the Pashas of Svarim started, which was Yud Beis Tammuz, Tafshin Memei, 35 years later. The first time that Rebbe spoke publicly, I, I think it was a Monday night, but I, it could have been a Sunday night. Hey, Tav- hey Tammuz was Sunday, so Yud Beis Tammuz was Sunday. So it was probably was Sunday night. I was not in New York, I was in California in Shlichus. So we watched the Rebbe, on the, in those days they had cables. So complicated to get the Rebbe on television. When the Friedrich Rebbe passed away, for about a year, the Rebbe kept on saying, all he said was the Friedrich Rebbe is still alive. You got that? But then he stopped speaking about it. When he became officially Rebbe. When, when, when the story with the books broke, he started to say that again. Right. You with me? Yeah. So now you got it. Okay. Okay. So Yud Beis Tammuz, Tov Shin, Mem Hei, when the first time the Rebbe spoke publicly about the Sfarim, the same language, the whole language of the Rebbe is alive became front and center. And the Rebbe spoke publicly just three or four times. The Rebbe spoke about in publicly three or four times, and then the Rebbe stopped for, for a secondary reason. It seems like the Rebbe would have talked about it by Rebbe Fabrengen. The Rebbe spoke about it in Yibis Tammuz, he spoke about it in Tezvav Tammuz, he spoke about it in Yechidis, and Shabbos Pashas Pinchas. Four times the Rebbe spoke publicly about the Svarim. I wasn't here, so I heard the live hookups. But the most painful discussion of the Svarim was actually on Shabbos. Shabbos Pashas Pinchas. Fabrengen finished at 5 o'clock. Fabrengen started at 1.30. It was the summer. Fabrengen finished at 1.30. And about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, the Fabrengen finished. And the Rebbe turned his chair like this. He had his back to the Rashag. He didn't want the Rashag to hear what he was saying. And the Rebbe sat facing west for two hours till 7 o'clock. And the Rebbe didn't shout. I wasn't there, I heard this from my brother. I heard from people, they never spoke in a soft voice. But there was so much pain, so much pain, so much pain. And they just talked, he unloaded, he just pushed it, unloaded. 35 years of Agmas Nevesh. And at that time, the signal, the language of the Rebbe was, the Rebbe's alive. Not only is the Rebbe alive, every day he's more alive than the day before. You know what the word sensitivity means? Yeah. The sensitivity sometimes requires judgment. Is sensitivity black and white, or sometimes when you're sensitive here, you're hurt someplace else? Yeah? yeah? This was the Rebbe's judgment. He was a pretty smart guy, the Rebbe. And he understood that this is preferred, that the Rashag shouldn't hear him. He couldn't hear. The Rebbe spoke very softly. And the Rashag was over 80. The Rashad couldn't hear him. So the language of that whole, that summer, the four times, the Rebbe spoke how the Friedrich Rebbe is still alive. And the Rebbe was so emotional. During the week, the Rebbe shouted. He mama screamed. Shabbos, he spoke in a very soft voice. It was a whole different, the way it was described to me, the Rebbe Pashat was talking to us like friends. Like, it wasn't a fabrengen. It was a intimate schmooze. And the Rebbe just unloaded so much pain. Because there was 35 years worth of pain. 35 years that Rebbe suffered in silence, this, this petty feud, and it all came out. But the language of the Rebbe during Pasha Sasfarim was that the Rebbe is alive. What was the basis for it? So there's two big bases, two big points. So much for teaching this to you, right? There were two big points. The first point is Tanya. And the second point is a Gemara. And again, I probably told this to you all on Tuesday, I'm repeating it. What does the Tanya say? The Tanya says that Chaye Tzadik Einim Chayim Besarim. The life of a Tzadik is never a physical life. The life of a Tzadik is Emunas Hashem and Avas Hashem and Yerusha. This is the Yerus HaKadosh Simen Chavzayin, the 27th letter in Tanya, which the Alter Rebbe wrote when his Rebbe passed away. The Mendel of Vitebsky. The life of a tzaddik is not measured in his body. The life of a tzaddik is love of God, fear of God, and faith in God. 
And the Rebbe said, those things don't finish. Those things don't finish. And then the Alt Rebbe explains that any person who was Makushit, who was connected with Tzadik during his physical life, continues to be connected to the Tzadik after the physical life finishes, as long as there's the continuation of what the Tzadik's life really is, which is Avas Hashem and Yiddish Hashem and Emunah Hashem, love of God, fear of God, and faith in God. If those things continue, so the Rebbe continues to living in those people. And the Alter Rebbe uses the Loshan, Kol HaKar of Kaidim Lebrach. The more connected you are to the Tzadik, you more you continue to draw from the life of the Tzadik posthumously after the interruption of the goof. And you should know that the Rebbe said multiple times, Rebbe said many times, that it's possible to be a Chosid of a Rebbe that you never knew physically. Because if, if the Rebbe's life, which is not his goof, the life of the tzaddik will always Abba Hashem, Yiras Hashem, Emunas Hashem. If you follow in the ways of the tzaddik, if you live as the Rebbe said to live, so in you and with you and through you, the tzaddik lives. That was the first quote that the Rebbe brought. And the second quote is the quote from the Gemara. Yanka Avinu Leimais. Right, the Gemara says, but Yigva doesn't say Vayamas. In Pashas Vayichi, next week's Pash, it doesn't say Vayamas that Yankiv died. It says he expired. It doesn't say he died. So the Gemara says, Yankov Vinu Leimais. Yankov didn't die. Why not? Why Yankov Vinu Leimais? What does the Gemara say? There's, there's different Pratim in the Gemara. Gemara say, Ma zare bachaye, ma fu bachaye. As long as his children are living, he's living. That's what the Gemara says. Ma zare bachaye, ma fu bachaye. As long as his children live, he lives. Now there's a number of different sikhas on this. There's a sikh about Meisha Rabbeinu Leimais in Lukut HaSikhas. But the word zera means children, right? But the word zera also means seeds. Seeds are planted. And when you plant a seed, it grows. So ma zarei b'chayim, afu b'chayim means as long as his children are alive, he's alive. But it means as long as the seeds that he planted continue to grow, he's living. And this becomes interesting because there's something called gidule gidulim. A person lives, a person passes away, right? During their lifetime, he did many good deeds. Those deeds are your seeds. It actually makes sense that the more years after a person dies, the more seeds there are, because the seeds produce fruit, which then have seeds that are planted again. So there's this notion of gedule gedule, the children of the children of the children. So, as long as his children are alive, he's alive also means the seeds everything that the Rebbe plants. So these are the arguments that the Rebbe made. First of all, you know, the, I mean, the Rebbe spoke about it in very literal terms, the Friedrich Rebbe is alive. But the way he argued it is from the Tanya, that the life of a tzaddik was never a physical life, it's always Avas Hashem, Yiras Hashem, and Emunas Hashem, and this lives on. And where does it live on? In Zare, the people who continue following in the ways of the Rebbe. So the Rebbe argued, uh, to put it in, in the most simple and straightforward terms, the Rebbe asked, you tell me the Friedrich Rebbe has passed away? I'm asking you. In 1950, there was a funeral. There was a Levaya. Now it's 1985. It's 35 years later. On, just be objective. You're going to tell me the Friedrich Rebbe passed away? Now what's the Rebbe's question? What do you mean? Yeah, I was in the Leviathan. What happens 35 years after a person dies? What happens? You know what happens? Nothing happens. They're gone, finished, get endicked. Sad Rebbe said, in the last 35 years, has the Friedrich Rebbe's life ended? Or has the Friedrich Rebbe's life increased? And there's only one answer to that question. His life has increased and increased and increased. Every day he's more alive than the day before. Factually, in, in Chassidim, in Shlichus, in the Rebbe's work, in the spreading of Chassidus, in the printing of Chassidus, the, it continues to grow. So there's an actual clip that goes around, that I'll probably come around this year, where the Rebbe is so emotional. The whole thing is three minutes. And the Rebbe says, Er shaitas He's screaming that he was a, there was a funeral. And Er shaitas given by the Levaya. And he screams that he was by the funeral and he saw where they put the Rebbe's goof. When Ich Shrei, and I'm screaming every day the Rebbe is more alive than he was the day before. 
And the Rebbe says, Nu versteh sach alein, was far a sof of Meshutef is es zwang franz and vision uns. You understand Yiddish? The Rebbe says, you understand what kind of common language we have. I can't talk to this person. He's speaking about a goof. And he says he was at the funeral and he was a witness that they put the Rebbe where they put the Rebbe's goof. And I'm screaming that there's never more life than today. And tomorrow is more than today. And the day after tomorrow is more than yesterday. Tomorrow. So we say, how can we talk to each other? We don't speak the same language. And this was the presentation, you understand? When the Rebbe talked about the sun the first that summer, and the Rebbe spoke publicly four times, and if not for an incident which was unfortunate, it's reasonable to presume the Rebbe would have spoken every Fabrengan about it and it would have been like Mihu Yehudi. They would have been spilled this kishkes. Would have been, you would see a lot of emotion, but this was the Toichen this was the Toichen Adobe, this was the thread of the Rebbe's message that the Rebbe lives in us. Mazari Bachaim, Afu Bachaim. This was, to speak, the spirit of that. That summer, the life of a tzaddik is not a niyin gash, but a niyin ruchni. Now, I, I'm just going to throw this in because, you know, a free ad is always a good thing. You go to the oil any time, day or night. The place is packed. It's so crazy. And the majority of the people present are not anash. They're not lababa chachsidim. Some of them are not even from people. And every year the crowds are bigger. Every year, Gimel Tammuz is 28 years ago. I, I can't get used to that. It's such a long time. It's 10 years longer than you're alive. It, it's mind-blowing. Every year, there are more people by the oil than the year before. Farvas. Why? Because it's a tourist attraction, but they give out the... Now they give apples. They don't just give cookies. They give apples. No, you're not. They tell me I got healthy. Here's a box of apples. They don't just give cookies. They give, <laughs> they give apples. They're the small little apples. We can, that's not frucht. Get that ice and rice. You don't have to make a baby mini mazenus. And get fat. You can make a baby behaitz and be healthy. That's why people are coming to the tea. And I'm asking you. People are coming to the tea for one reason. Because it works. People are not coming because it's cute. They're not coming because the other guy went. Because people have stories upon stories upon stories upon stories upon stories. And all of these stories add up to what thing? One thing and one thing only. The Rebbe is so alive. What the Rebbe told Dubav on Tuesday after Yud Shvat, when Rabbi Dubav tells the Rebbe, until now was the Rebbe and now was you, and the Rebbe says the Rebbe leapt. You see, when the Rebbe said it 50, 60, 70 years ago, how did we hear it? So when the Rebbe said the Fiddik and was alive, he meant himself. That's how he understood it. But today we see Babuchish. What is the meaning of a Rebbe a Tzadik? A Rebbe a Tzadik is a Yid who's not, whose Matthias is not as goof. It never was as goof. And because of the Matthias is not as goof, as long as there are people walking on this earth that are Helchim, Be'er, Chesav, Netzach, Sel, Avod. The Rebbe quoted this Lashon again and again from the Tadye. Who follow in his pathways, which are Netzach, Sel, Avod. You know what Netzach means? Forever. You know what Sela means? Forever. You know what Vod means? Forever. Netzach Sela Vod. As long as there's people who are going in the ways of the Rebbe, that the Rebbe's life and the Rebbe's inspiration and the Rebbe's teaching and the Rebbe's approach is real in this world, the Rebbe lives. This was the language that the Rebbe spoke. So now the Shaila becomes. So what's the problem? What's the problem? If the Rebbe is alive, what's the problem? The problem is that someone is saying he isn't. The problem is that someone is saying he isn't. When Berke took Svarim, when Barry took books, he wasn't taking books. He was saying that the Friedrich Rebbe passed away. That's what he was saying. And the Rebbe didn't hear Barry saying the Rebbe passed away. The Rebbe heard the Elimes Halyonim saying that the Rebbe passed away. When Berke took Svarim, and Berke took Svarim on the grounds, my grandfather passed away, he had an estate, I'm his grandson, I'm entitled to a piece of the spoil, it's mine. He passed away. The Rebbe didn't hear, he passed away and if I want books. The Rebbe heard he passed away and he's finished. He's finished. He's finished. Now, 
What does it mean that the Rebbe passed away and he's finished? What does it mean? What does it mean? The free the Rebbe passed away and he's finished. What does it mean? It means that everything that you see in Lubavitch today is not connected to the free the Rebbe. Saying that the free the Rebbe passed away is saying what? Rabbi Schneerson, you're a great man. You did great things. But you're not sitting on the seat of your father-in-law. This is a new chair. Do you understand how sensitive that is to the Rebbe? When Berke took books, when Barry took books, why did he take books? This is what he means. The Rebbe passed away. The Felix Rebbe's life is over. Now what did the Rebbe hear? The Rebbe didn't hear that Barry said the Felix Rebbe's life is over. The Rebbe heard that Lamaila they're saying the Felix Rebbe's life is over. If the Fiedek Rebbe's life is over, what's he doing? What's he doing, the Rebbe? What's he doing? He made a new thing. Call it whatever you want. But it's not a continuation to the Fiedek Rebbe. You know when the Rebbe Tzachayim Mushka passed away? When the Rebbe Tzachayim Mushka passed away, the Rebbe called in a Rav and asked him for a coin to Allah, he's still a son-in-law. Do you know that? The Rebbe called in a Rav after the Rebbe Zechariah Mushka passed away, and he asked if according to Jewish law, he's still a son of the Fiedek Rebbe. And the Rebbe had to say, yeah, that's the easy part. He had to also prove it. I'll be Now why does the Rebbe care? Yes, son or no son, the Rebbe changed the world. The Rebbe is the king of the world. More today than ever. You know what the answer is? Because as important as the Rebbe is to us, the Fiedek Rebbe is to him. The Rebbe loved his parents, I promise you. And he respected his parents, I promise you. But the Rebbe is Eine. The Rebbe was the Rebbe, was the Fiedek Rebbe. And the Rebbe wasn't becoming his Rebbe because his father wanted, or his mother wanted. Because the Rebbe is Schwer. So after the Yud Shvat, and people came to the Rebbe and they said, this was negotiated before you got engaged. And the Rebbe said very simply, my mother told me, my father told me, my Rebbe didn't tell me. You know the end of that story? You know the end of that story? You know the end of that story? Ten Hasidim went to the oil. On Lag Bohem et of Shin Yud. And they told the Friedrich Rebbe that the Rebbe keeps on saying that I didn't hear from the Friedrich Rebbe. Well, the Rebbe went to the oil the same day. Lag Bohem et of Shin Yud. He never used that excuse again. That excuse was it. In other words, it was, it was a Messias. The Rebbe kept on saying, I didn't hear from the Friedrich Rebbe. So the Chassidim went to the Fiedek Rebbe and said, please tell him. Now, I don't know how these things work, but he never ever again said, So you see, you need to understand this whole story through the Rebbe's eyes. From the Rebbe's eyes, the issue was, not if the Rebbe is legitimate, but the bankel. Is it the same chair or is it a new chair? If it's a new chair, I quit. I'm not interested. If it's the same chair. You know that there's an actual tape. There's a tape. You can hear it in a the tape. There was once a fabric in the very, very early years. The Rebbe must have taken a lot of mashke. And somebody goes over to the Rebbe and says something. And you hear the Rebbe say to him. You can hear the tape. Willst du benehmen dem Schwer? You understand Yiddish? Willst du benehmen dem Schwer? You want to feed the Rebbe's job? Do you want this job? But the Rebbe didn't say, you want to be a Rebbe? You want to be the Fiedek Rebbe's replacement? Which meant, I am. Back off. But there's actual tape. You can hear the Rebbe saying these words to someone. You want the job. And when the Rebbe said to that man, the Rebbe was saying, Ich bin der Schwer. And 35 years on, when Berke takes for him, the Rebbe didn't see his nephew and his sister-in-law. The Rebbe Posh had said that Lamaila, there is a question about continuity, about Benkel, about the chair. So this touched the Rebbe in the deepest place. There's nothing deeper in the Rebbe than his kashas. And that's what this was. That's this story. This was an attack, this was an argument that said the Friedrich Rebbe passed away. It didn't say the Rebbe is not legitimate, it didn't say the Rebbe is not important. It said the Friedrich Rebbe passed away. Which means, spiritually, 
The Rebbe is not sitting on the same chair, he's sitting on a different chair. You cannot hurt the Rebbe more than to press on the nerve of his kashras. It's just not possible. So when you watch those videos of how upset the Rebbe is, and you say, really? Books are that important? It wasn't about books. It was about these two statements. The Tanya and the Gemara. What does the Tanya say? The life of a tzaddik never was a physical life. The life of a tzaddik is Abbas Hashem, Yiras Hashem, Bemunas Hashem. And there's no hefzik, that doesn't die. And then the second Maim Chazal. To the Rebbe, this is what was ta- challenged. The the Chaya Tzadik Einim Chaim Besorim. And Zare Bachaim Avu Bachaim, this was the Kitruk. The Rebbe never ever saw his opponent, his nephew. He saw his adversary that somebody up there was actually claiming that there's a hefsek, that there's an interruption. So what's Dida Notzach? Right? Like say Dida Notzach, we got the books, Dida Notzach. It's funny to me how people are satisfied with having this big yomta because you want books. I, Really? Really? It's like, really? You know the Rebbe? Books? Mamish? It wasn't books. It was Zari Bachayim, it was the Benko. The Rebbe said, the Benko. This chair isn't mine. It's the Fidik Rebbe. Yeah, what do you mean? It was bought in 1978. <laughs> he didn't mean the piece of wood and the foam with the red felt. He meant the Koyach. The bankle, the seat is the Alter Rebbe seat, it's the Baal Shem Tov seat, the Rebbe is sitting on that same bankle. And someone challenged the continuity of the bankle. And that someone was not a boss of Adam. In other words, the Rebbe saw this, Alter Rebbe went to jail. Why? Because the Mestagdim put him in jail. Alter Rebbe went to jail because Lamayla there was a Kitrug. And that's how the Rebbe understood what was happening. That's why the Rebbe was so hurt. <laughs> What were they fighting about? Books? Mamish? The Rebbe is not more mentioned. You don't think more highly of the Rebbe than that? It wasn't about books. It was about the very definition of the Rebbe. If I'm sitting on the feet of the Rebbe's chair, it's good. I need to have an interest in the Gansa Meiser. This is the story, you understand? And this is the Dida Notzach. The Dida Notzach, what we're celebrating, is that the same force that questioned the Zare Bachayim of Hubachayim came back and passed and no! Hubachayim! And not the court, the Bezim Shalmaila, whoever judges upstairs, when we won the Svarim, as far as the Rebbe was concerned, that was an affirmation, not that he's a Rebbe, but that he's the Friedrich Rebbe. The Benko, it's the same chair. This is the story. And this is why Hamisha Betevis is such a big Yom Tev. Girls, after Gimel Tammuz, Hamisha Betavis makes more sense than before Gimel Tammuz. It's almost as if Hamisha Betavis is the Nesinas Kayach. You were born after Gimel Tammuz. You're a Lubavitcher Hasidim. Many of you are going to go on Shlichus. You're certainly going to raise your children with, with a Lubavitch identity and Lubavitch pride. It's because of Haytavis. What does Haytavis have to do with this? Because Hamisha Betavis established a, a Yom Tif that says, there's no such thing as the end of a life of a tzaddik. Unless we stop listening to him. So the question was, are we listening? Are we listening? And the answer was, yeah, we're listening. That's Dida Notzach. That's a big deal. And it's more important today than when it happened. It's more important for you. This is terrible to say. It's more important for you than for me. This is your Rebbe. This is your Rebbe. Your Rebbe is Zare Bachaim, Afu Bachaim. The date which establishes this forever is Chavisha Betavis. Now you had questions. You were first. You need to understand that there is a, a nigla side to the story. I came in here today and I gave you what the Rebbe said in the Sikhs. There's another side. There's a whole practical side to this. When we went into court, we didn't tell the judge the Fidik Rebbe is alive because people are still going on with Tzayim. The practical side of it is that the Fidik Rebbe legally incorporated Agudas Chassidic Chabad. 
on the books, 770 belongs to a good servant. The Rebbe paid rent. I told you this Tuesday. The Rebbe paid rent every month for his apartment. Fear the kid Rebbe lived in 770, paid rent. So there's a niggler side to this. In other words, a, I gave you the chassidus today. There's a niggler side. They were saying that when the Fiyidik Rebbe made 770 a good of Siddiq Chabad's, when he made the lie a good of Siddiq Chabad, he did it for tax reasons. And the Rebbe said, really, that's what you think of the Fiyidik Rebbe? That's what they said in court. He didn't mean it. Really, it's his. Now, but then it was better for taxes, it was better to save his library from the Europeans to say it belongs to Aguch. And this is really, that's what you think of the Fiyid of Gerabah, a liar and a thief? They discounted everything that he worked on. They discounted our Rebbe. They didn't discount the Fiyid they discounted our Rebbe. But you, said, you made a point that there's two sides to the coin. So I'm answering you that in court we didn't say what I said here. Right. In court we said that the Fiyid of Gerabah made it public. He made it ours. And they said he didn't really mean it. He was lying to save money or to get help from the government or whatever other explanation. You got it? Yeah. Now you were the next hand. Um, I started from such a seemingly negative, negative thing. That's right. Right? So what is the point of having a negative thing? Because you can't really say anything negative. So how is it that Alter went to jail? which is seemingly a negative thing. And then came you to Skislev. That you understand? No. You got it? I'm not adding to my question. Okay. I'll, try, I'll talk in English. I'll try to talk in English. <laughs> I wish I could talk in Yiddish. Some things you just you gotta say in Yiddish. Put him. Tafresh Pei, 1920. Two weeks before the Rebbe Rashab passed away. The Bolshevikists, the communists, came into Rostov in that summer, that winter, March, whatever it was, uh, February. The, the communists started in Leningrad, which is the very top of Russia. Rostov is the very bottom of Russia. And there was a civil war for three years, killing and killing and killing and killing. And they pushed, the communists pushed south. Trotsky made the Red Army, and they defeated all the other armies. Trotsky was a Jewish boy from Haider. And then they came into Rostov. When they came into Rostov, the Rebbe Rashab said, <coughs> I can't live with them. And then the Rebbe Rashab passed away. The Friedrich Rebbe said that the Rebbe Rashab passed away before his time. I mean, she was supposed to live a few more years. The Rebbe Rashab passed away. I can't live with them. The middle of the Rebbe had the same story with the Kantanist. I can't do it. He passed away. He left it for the Tzermach Tzedek. The Rebbe Rashab said, I can't do this. He left it for the Fiyadik Rebbe. Yeah. I can't live with them. Put him at Platzd. There was martial law. And there was a curfew. You're not allowed to be out in the street. You're not allowed to raise money. You're not allowed to drink. Brengen. Chassidim came. And they talked in whispers. The Rebbe Rashab talked in a whisper. Till midnight. All of a sudden the Rebbe Rashab says, what's going on? It's Purim. Let's fabang! The Chassidim thought it was the coolest idea and the Friyeh, the Rebbe went into a panic. Tate! There's police people, they're shooting people for walking in the street. Just for walking outside, they're shooting people. It's a whole long story. And two weeks later was the Histalkos. But the quote that I want you to hear is this. The Rebbe Rashab said to the Friedrich Rebbe, Yosef Yitzchak, he always called him by his full name, Yosef Yitzchak, mir vel in ganz sein, nicht in unser Etzim, not in unser Hispashtus. That means Yosef Yitzchak, we're going to remain whole, not in our essence, but in our radiation, in our expansion. It's the manifestation of the, it's the real essence. The Rebbe Rashab said to his son, this world is ours. It may not look like it. This is our world and we're going to own it. That's what a Rebbe does. Kinderlach. A Rebbe makes a piece of this world his. We try to survive and get out of here. Yeah? A Rebbe makes a piece of this world his. And this is, to make a piece of this world his, you got to fight with this world. And this world doesn't say, please take a bigger piece. It pushes back. The whole Chiddush of Yiddishkeit and Kedusha is Tachtoinim. 
that you make this world yours. You know, Mashiach is going to come. You know that, young lady? Mashiach is going to come. And when Mashiach is going to come, every guy in this world is going to say, Har Sinai is Emes, and Meish Rabbeinu is Emes, and Teir is Emes. That's the Taich, Mirvel and Gansai, and Unzir is Pashtus. But when Kedusha pushes, Klippa pushes back. And the more Kedusha pushes, the more Klippa pushes back. And that's where the Alta Rebbe went to jail. The Rebbe, when the Sfarim were taken from 770, it was, as far as the Rebbe was concerned, he was sitting in jail. Mamish. Okay.